Hey you guys, how are you guys doing? It's time for another chit chat. And in this chit chat video, I'm gonna be doing a braid out with the Design Essentials African Chibi or Chebe. I know I need to learn how to pronounce that correctly. Um, I already officially reviewed this product and I did a twist out, but now I'm gonna do a nasty old braid out. So hey you guys, it's time for another chit chat video. It's been a while, two weeks baby, but I've been busy. So y'all know how we do this. I talk about what's going on in my personal life, what I'm watching on YouTube and what I'm watching on TV. Is that right? Yeah. So, girl, it is hot. It's hot. It's hot everywhere. Where you at? It's hot. Um, it was like 105 here in 105, 105 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know what it is in Celsius, but I'm pretty sure it's hot. <laughs> Regardless. Hi, so I've been staying myself inside. I am not going outside for nobody's reason at all. Not having it. Um, because it's way, way, way too hot. I'm gonna lightly detangle my hair. So yeah, that that's too hot. So we haven't been doing much of anything, you guys. Look, school starts in a month. Something's going by fast. The school starts in one month exactly. So what I've been doing for the summertime is really visiting my family. Um, I went back to Kilgore or Longview to visit my parents and some other extended family. But I really want to take this time to visit um, some other family members. I visited my, my dad's sister, um, one of the sisters. <laughs> And, but I like I said, I want to visit some other family members when I get a chance here. So that's what I've been focusing on. What else? What else? What else? Work has been so busy. And I don't really like to talk a lot about my work because I want to keep things, you know, personal here um, on that type of level. But it's been busy. Um, if those of you don't know, I work in education. I've been working from home going on 11 years now. 11 or 10 years? Girl, a long time. I often take on projects, a little contract jobs just for supplemental income. I'm doing something for the city of Frisco. Really like to bad mouth other um, organizations or companies because that's just not a good look and I need that money to come in. But one of the things I've been doing, you guys, every morning or I try to do every morning, I say this positive affirmation, this mantra, whatever. Seriously, I'm so grateful and thankful to have multiple streams of income coming in on a continuous basis. Now, what I added to that is I'm so grateful that I'm able to pay down my debt within two years. You got to be very specific because I was saying that I'm so grateful and happy um, so grateful and thankful, excuse me, to have multiple streams of income coming in on a continuous basis. When I tell you speaking that into existing and not only speaking it, but believing in it. Because, um, anyway, you guys, JB is doing good. He's doing real good. He's going through changes, girl. Attitude for days, like a serious attitude. And I'm like, you need to get it together. Um, I try to really talk to my child, which is something that, I didn't grow up having and that's not you know i'm not blaming my parents for that they just didn't know any better you know so when something is going on with jb i talk to him i want to get to the bottom of it oftentimes he's like i don't want to talk I don't, you won't understand you know you won't understand <laughs> um and but i want to have that open communication with him because i know that soon he's really not going to want to talk you know once he's starts going through puberty and all of that um but that's it you guys is hot school is starting soon what is this old pies girl <sighs> my mama gave me my all of my old pics of me in high school yeah i was fluffy when i was in high school i don't want to show y'all but just to let y'all know I was, of course, shorter because I actually grew when I went to college because I went to college as a teen. Um, so I, uh, I applied when I was 16. I went on 17, 17. I went on with 17. So anyway, and I was fluffy as hell. Like, I think I was 200 at maybe five feet. 
Woo, child. So my mama took it upon herself to give me all of my old pictures. And I'm like, what, what do I need this for? These type of memories. And she starts laughing. She's like, oh, I thought maybe you want to show Alex. Let me tell you something. Alex would never see this shit. I didn't tell her that, you know, the S word. But I said, Alex would, matter of fact, I got those pictures hidden behind my bookshelf. He would never know that I have been fine. I have not been fine. I've been fine all my life. That's all you need to know, Alex. That's my husband's name. Or that's what I call him, Alex. I've been fine all my life. <laughs> he ain't never going to see those goof troop ass pictures. One of, my, one of the pictures in my glasses looking like this. Are you right to mind? Oh, YouTube. First off, you know what? It's real easy to sit behind your computer, your keyboard, what we call them, keyboard warriors, and talk a bunch of nonsense. And you look like all my life I had to fight. You got a big wide back like Ninja Turtles or some shit. <laughs> You walking around with a damn ninja turtle bag, a damn turtle bag, but you want to talk about the reason why this is what I'm getting to. I saw on just a couple of YouTube videos where people were actually reacting to some hate comments that Vanessa Williams and what is her name? Light skin from uh, Martin, Tisha Campbell. Basically saying, wow, you look old. And these are people commenting on their social media pages. Like, wow, what's wrong with her skin? What's wrong with her neck? Both of those women are over 50. I think Vanessa Williams, Williams is over 60. Is she not? God forgive me, she's not. But you expect women to look that young all their life? First of all, I don't think neither one of them look bad to begin with. They don't. Um, they look their age. That's what older people, not just women, older people are supposed to age like that. Nothing wrong with it. Absolutely nothing wrong with either one of them. And I seen the picture of Vanilla. Yes, her skin is kind of, she's older. What do you expect, y'all? I just can't deal with it. I really can't. Um, besides that, I'm still on my... Yeah, I know. I love me some true crime. I try to watch it, but I love me some true crime. It, it just amazes me how many people show up to... Hold on, y'all. How many people show up to... It just amazes me how many people sit there and talk to, you know, the detectives without a lawyer. One of the things they even say, when they, when they are reading you your Miranda rights, they literally say... You have a right to be silent. You have a right to a lawyer. Hello? <laughs> that means shut your ass up and ask for a lawyer and boom, it's done. They build their case on the crap you splits you talking about doing the investigation because you think that you smart and you ain't gonna get caught. No. So one of the things I do, I don't know if I said this before. One of the things that I do with JB specifically, since he is a young brown boy, is I test him with good cop, bad cop. I just roll up on him and be like, hey, um, thank you for coming down to the, you know, the office. We understand that you and your friend Jerome were at the Piggly Wiggly Saturday night. And we want to ask you about the shooting there. JB's looking at me like, and he's like, he starts laughing. He's like, I, I want, I want a, I want a lawyer. I said, look here, son. <laughs> your friend Jerome is already talking. This is your only chance to clear your name. You need to tell us your truth. This is the reason why I do this. Because some cops, even though they get told, even though the person that they're questioning says, I want to speak to a lawyer, some of them still keep talking. Well, your friend is over there already talking. Don't you want to tell your hat? You, you want to tell your story? We saw you on surveillance. I want to speak to a lawyer. You want a hamburger? You hungry? You've been up here for, I know you've been waiting for about an hour. You want, you want a burger? I want to speak to a lawyer. I have trained, most adults don't even know this. Once you say those words, I want a lawyer. I want to speak to a lawyer. Even if it's a public defendant, which your ass probably going to get. That's okay. Any of you cut. But a lot of people don't know that. They have no idea. Um, so I really... <laughs> But anyway, just watching those true crimes 
on YouTube just reminds me of that, that all these people are just talking, just blatantly just talking. It's like, you don't have to say anything. So I didn't know if I was going to talk about this, but I am because of my channel and I can do what I want on my channel to a certain degree. So I'm not rolling my eyes, but I am. I'm seeing yet again, a wave of young women that are going back to relaxers. And I'm like, girl, <laughs> did you not hear the message? If you or a loved one has used any of these hair relaxers and have suffered from fibroids, ovarian cancer, breast cancer, please call us that. You're not hearing that? And you still, go and it's not like people that have been relaxed, I mean, excuse me, natural for a couple of years. These are women that have been, you know, natural for eight, 10, 13 years. And I know that you guys are going to say, you know, it's it's just hair. They can do whatever they want. It's not just hair when what you are applying to you. Let me just say this. I agree to a certain extent. However, it's not just hair when what you are applying to your hair can ultimately affect the future you. Take that into consideration. I think a lot of the YouTubers that I'm seeing, they're fairly young, meaning they're in their 20s, early 30s, and they're not thinking about their 40s and 50s. Baby, let me tell you something. <laughs> I have no desire to go back to relaxers. Um, and what I'm finding, some of the comments that I see from other people that are commenting on these videos, you can do whatever you want, but I'm gonna give y'all some information on why it is so dangerous. And just to, just to think about this before you decide to go there. And if, after I tell you this and you're like, yeah, that's whatever. Do you? I think, well, at least from what I've seen in the comments is that the number one reason is that their natural hair is so much work. Their natural hair is more work. Their hair is not growing. Their hair is breaking off. I find that women that are having those issues are either not using the right products for their hair or their regimen is way off, which is still a part of the, the products is part of their regimen. The regimen is off. I'm having a hard time trying to understand that because there is so much information out there for people. And perhaps that is a problem, problem in itself is that, and I've said this before, it's oversaturated with information. It's oversaturated with products. But let me tell you something. All you need is to know how to really cleanse your hair, properly moisturize your hair, and style your hair neatly. You don't have, have to have a banging twist style or all that. You can wear twists like I do. I'm going to get to that in a minute. The reason why I think this is problematic and it just breaks my heart to see so many young women doing this is because the hair relaxers have what is called estrogen disruptors. This is one of the reasons why, the main reason why it is causing a disturbance in your estrogen and your hormone, your, your normal hormones are being disrupted by using these products. Well, Vivian, there's a lot of products that are bad for you. Absolutely, but when you are using a product that is going directly on your hair, so your pores may be open, they're gonna be open anyway once you apply that water, and then now the product with tons of ingredients, harmful ingredients. So not only that, you guys, but they don't know why, meaning the scientists and the medical doctors and all that, cancers, autoimmune diseases affect us more aggressively. And I've always heard this, even from my own doctors, because I have some issues. I'm okay, I'm okay now. But I always get told, make sure you take your medicine, make sure you go to the doctors because of yada yada. And I get it. But not only that, but we know that black people in general or as far as healthcare, we are disproportionately not treated the same as white women. Hispanics, or whatever it may be. This is one of the reasons why um, pregnant women, black women, excuse me, have a high morality rate, um, have a high death rate when they're going to the hospital. A lot of them are dying, you know what I mean? So that is still the same case when it comes to cancers and treating the cancer. So not only is it affecting you aggressively, but you're not gonna get the same type of care. This is what I'm trying to tell you. So I'm going to say this also when it comes to perm. So you know that smell that you, y'all remember that smell you smell <laughs> when you perm the hair. That's a toxin floating in the air. I read an actual paper where it stated that when you are applying that perm, you're supposed to be more, you know, those cheap ass, 
you know, uh, gloves, wear those. And the person that is applying the perm is supposed to wear protective goggles because there has been instances of people having asthma, developing eczema, allergies. That's all in the same thing. Breathing issues, lung from inhaling the toxins that are floating around, putting perms on their hair. Make a educated and wise decision. I get that dealing with your natural hair isn't easy and it's a lot of work, but going to go get screenings for cancer, going through chemotherapy, getting your medication. All I'm saying you guys is that we have to make wise decisions because right now it may be easier but it's just what's easier and what's more convenient is not the best that's for your overall health. That's all I'm saying. You can take this information and be like, girl, whatever. I'm going to go ahead and get my um <laughs> my African pride or Africa's best. <laughs> do what you got to do. But just know that you're risking it every time you do it. So that's all I'm going to say. Okay, moving on. What I'm watching on TV. Let me tell you something from what well, I tell you. This was so... It was so amazing you know, that I enjoyed it, every, everything. This was, to me, let me tell you what, what I felt like. This was the series Lost mixed with The Walking Dead mixed with, what was that series, Wayward Pines, where those things, creatures, and they were on the lot, all of that. It was awesome, and it has the little, um, not little, the nerdyish like black guy on from he has the dreads you know what i'm talking about he also played in the matrix i love him I, I like him i really do like him and i think he was actually in lost wasn't he so it's so mysterious it's so awesome what did you watch it vivian okay sorry <laughs> so i was watching this on amazon prime and i paid for it girl and then i stopped it um, it was just two seasons. They're having a third season come out and I absolutely enjoyed it. It's basically surrounding about a group of people that are in this town and there are some mysterious things going on. There's like, spoiler, there's portals. There's these beings. I don't know what they are, but they, they, they're bad. And so these people are almost stuck in a loop meaning the townspeople and they're stuck in this town and they can't get out i can't wait for season three i really can't it, it's it's just so interesting to see the take on this what else what else what else oh i got a recommendation to watch death becomes her let me tell you something i love that movie with meryl street and goldie hahn <laughs> and bruce willis oh, poor bruce willis Oh, y'all, poor Gus Willis. I'm just remembering that he has frontal dementia. And there's somebody else that has dementia. Oh, you guys, the guy that does, um, I don't know his name, but he, he will always come on the news or the daytime shows, talk shows with his animals. Y'all, he has, he either has dementia or Alzheimer's, and he literally has forgotten his family. Um, I'm going to get you sucker. <laughs> so silly i'm gonna get you suckers on my watch list on hulu child i don't know my, my parents were young there were so many that's almost like a cult classic in the african-american community community with the Wayne brothers you had um isaac hayes you had that football player um the light skinned girl from what is she from? I can't remember. Child, when the Wayne and sister was singing, when the things come marching in at the jazz club, I that that is absolutely hilarious. There's so many cameos. You have Chris Rock when he was young and very skinny, um, in it also. So I'm gonna watch that too. I rewatch Megan. Let me tell you something. Chucky ain't got shit on Megan. When Megan came into that house and took off those glasses and was like, okay, <laughs> what's going on? I was like, all right, Megan, come through. Um, watching Megan, watch it again, I mean. Then I watched another movie with Jake. I'm going to butcher his last name. He has the pretty eyes. 
dark hair. He played in Dunny Darko. Jake Gladler and the the black guy that played in Candyman. I forgot his name too. I'm gonna put it below y'all. I never had nobody's name. So I watched a movie called Ambulance. It was good. Action thriller bank heist gone wrong. You already know what's gonna happen. Somebody's gonna die. Somebody's gonna die. But it was good. I watched Carrie, the original Carrie with turned up nose, Carrie Fisher. Um, this is funny that the movie was called Carrie, and she, Carrie Fisher plays in it. But anyway, well, child, I watch What's Love Got to Do With It. And it's on, what station is it on? It's on Hulu. There's a lot of good movies and stuff on Hulu. And so, you know, when we first came out, a couple of us, unless you really went through something like that, it was considered funny because we knew or we heard about how Ike was um, and how he treated Tina. And the only reason why I watched it is because I just wanted to go through and watch it again, especially after the death of Tina Turner, which, hold on, y'all, this hair. I didn't realize that she stayed in Switzerland all this time. And she kind of, well, kind of, not even kind of, she basically broke off, I don't know, I don't necessarily want to say communication, but she kind of separated herself from her family. Um, I don't know the real reasons behind that, but she did. I'm back to watching The Yellow Jacket heifers let me tell you something i'm on season two i think i'm on episode four and christina richie is a whole bag of craziness like but she's the type of crazy that that you can admire one of the things that she said in season one was that there is actually a product that you can use that will help you clean up blood to where the luminol doesn't detect it. And I'm like, really? And I don't even know how accurate that is. I'm pretty sure some of it has some truth to it, but it's really difficult to get blood up, even, even with this supposed different um, product. But it's a really, really, really good series. Again, it's Yellow Jackets on Hulu, but it's not just because of the people that are portraying the characters. It's the character development itself. So yeah, I'm watching that. Um, there was another series I started to watch. Oh God, Picky Blinders. I don't know. Picky Blinders, I may have to start over. Um, this is the last season that I'm on. The same thing with The Witcher, which The Witcher has season three out on Netflix and I just can't get into it. And I honestly think it's because that actor, I found out that that actor had a thing for really, really young women. And that totally turned me off. Like, I think one of his girlfriends was literally like a teenager. And he was damn near 35 years old. Now, he's fine as hell. But that was just a big turn off of me, y'all. So, I couldn't really get into it. So, anyway. Um, gonna go ahead and watch it. But, y'all, that is it. I'm just yapping the way. What? That makes sense. So, that is it, you guys. I'm gonna continue with my hair. But thank you for watching. Take care. Bye.